here it is here in um in Unreal Ed, and even now you really can't do anything with it, right? So I'm gonna go into Kismet here. So the little it looks like a K. Now right click and go to New Matinee. Okay, so now it just um created this matinee sequence here, and there's nothing in it. Okay, so what you want to do is um you want to make sure that you have your mesh selected. Double click on your matinee, right click, and go to new empty group. Okay, so you want to add a new empty group, and then you can name it whatever you want. So I'll name it stair. Okay, now you have this here, and you can see it shows up here in Kismet, right? So whatever you named it, it goes and it adds it to Interpactor. So additionally, if I deselect this, I can double click on this and it brings me back to Interpactor. So now while I'm still in here, same thing. You can you can deselect it in here and reselect it and see what's happening over here. Right? So now I'm if you select stare again and you right click on it, you can go to new movement track. Now what this is gonna do is you can see there's a little triangle here. And I'll go ahead and tell you real quick, you you can um, pan this around by clicking and dragging here or down here. And then you can zoom in and out by just scrolling your, your mouse wheel. And that's actually the only way to, to zoom in and out as far as I know. So, and then this right here changes time. So you can see it's labeled down on the bottom, 0 seconds, 0.5 seconds, 1 second, 2 second, 3 second, 4, and here's 5. Now you can only... Now while you click down here, it's always going to select that. If you click up here, it's not going to move time. So you can see right now, you hit the end and time doesn't go any further than this little triangle down here. So if you want to make it any longer, you can just click and drag that triangle wherever you want it. Either longer or shorter, it doesn't matter. Just however you want it to be. So I'm going to try to get it back to about 5 seconds. And you can see down here, uh, it shows you what time you're at out of what time there is. So I can move that up to... Uh, you know, five five point five point zero or 5.506 seconds if I wanted to. I'm going to try to get it down to 5 again. Oh, there it goes. Oh, close enough. I'll call that good. Now, what you can do here then is while you have the movement track selected, if you press enter, then it adds another keyframe here is what it's called, that little triangle. So I'll go ahead and exit out of this so we have a little bit more room here so we can see what's going on. And I'm going to make this a bit smaller also. And now while this keyframe is selected and it says the number of the key right here, it says adjust key and then the number down on the bottom of these corners. Now what that makes it so you can do is you can drag it around someplace wherever you want and then watch what happens now and then when we change time. See now, I have real-time turned on. Notice that real quick. Um, it turns on automatically when you go into matinee, usually. Look at this. And it moves, right? So, basically, that's what's called um, interpolation. So you say, at this point in time, be here. At this point in time, I want you to be here. And then it'll automatically interpolate every distance in between that. And then you can also see it, it adds that little yellow line. That's called a movement track, and that shows you exactly where it's going to move. Now I'll show you what these little green arrows do. If I go and press the loop button, it loops between these arrows here, right? So now I can extend that to wherever I want. So if there's just a little part of it I want to play again, or if I want to do the whole thing, I can always drag it out to the whole thing also. And then, I, I guess I never got to the point where I said, play and stop. It, that's pretty simple. Now one thing I want to show you here then real quick is while I still have the movement track selected, I'll add another keyframe and I'll go and move it here. And you can see when I dragged it over there, it made it so it's a nice big curved line. So if you move the camera up so we can see what's going on here, you can see it made it a very smooth transition. Now sometimes though that can cause problems. Sometimes that curve might make it so it goes through a wall or something like that. Now to fix this, what you do is you need to change the curve editor is what it's called, or you, you go and edit it through the curve editor. 
So you go to View, Toggle Curve Editor. It might already be on from for default from some or for some of you. Then, right now, there's nothing on this Curve Editor, right? You can't see anything. So if you click this little square here, it adds it to the Curve Editor. So you can see these lines here show movement. So you can go to any any point here, and you can see each color here uh, is movement along a different axis. So now you can always look down here to see what colors they are. So you can see blue is green, or I'm sorry, blue is Z or Z, um, which that's up and down, right? Then Y and X, those are both the different uh, side to side and forward or backward, depending on which way you're looking at it. Um, and you can see the movements all along here also. And like I said, down in this little corner here. So, okay, now while we're looking at this, we can, if we zoom out a bit here, we can select more than one point here by pressing Control and Alt and then dragging a square around this. Now, usually the way that they do it is um, they say, okay, now click the flatten tangents button and what that's going to do is make it so that this is more exact more or less is, is basically what it does um, so it's going to be closer to a, okay basically it makes it so that it'll be still that curve but it won't be such an outrageous absurd long curve if you know what I mean so and then you can also if, if you want to see something you can also grab this and you can drag the curve however you really want it to be uh, manually right so if we go and do it something absurd like that now you can see how boom now it goes way way down there because of that uh, movement along the curve there that we just made so if we go back and flatten tangents again it'll do that now you can also do the same control and alt uh, selection here so I'll delete all those keys except I forgot you can't delete your initial initial track key so you can't delete the first one, but you can delete all the other ones here. So now that I've done that, I'm going to show you something else here. You can also set this to linear, and what that does is it makes it so that no matter what you what you do, no matter how you move it, it's always going to be straight lines from one to the next. It's going to be completely linear. It's not going to do that nice curve for you. So there are times when both are very nice. Um, but that's, you know, it really just depends on the situation. And you can see here how incredibly straight these lines are. Um, and you can do the same thing here, though, uh, just to a lesser extent. And you can see the reason why this curve doesn't look quite so straight is because this first node is actually still the normal uh, auto curve node. So you can also go and select all of these. And you can select different uh, options up here so you can make it so that they're all completely linear now that first curve that I showed you you can see now it turned green that's because now it is completely perfectly linear 100% no curve except for the curve that or no curve is completely straight and so any time that it stops and turns or anything that's because that's how you told it to do so that's pretty much um, it for now so don't try to make anything um, for, like don't actually try to make anything yet though because it's not going to work out quite yet I haven't showed you everything um, there's a bit more to this but I'm, I haven't gotten to it yet I'll show you and actually one thing I want to show you though real quick first is rotation so I'm going to delete these nodes again here and I'm going to keep it linear just because it's a little bit easier um, so I don't have to go into the curve editor every time but I'm going to add some of these in. And you can go back and edit these also just by clicking on uh, the ones you already have there. So I'll move this over here. And then if you press spacebar, it changes what you do here. So I'm going to turn off um, the lock here so I can rotate it freely. And I'll put it like that. Then for this one, I'll rotate it that way a little bit. And I'll go back to uh, movement and go like that. So now if we watch it. It does rotate. I guess I'll, I'll make it a bit of a more extreme rotation, though, just so you can really see it. Okay, look at that. Now, one thing I'll go ahead and tell you to do is, um, and maybe I won't actually. Never mind. I'll, I might tell you later. No, I'll, I'll go ahead and tell you now. 
uh, you should usually check B use interpolate or quad quad interpolation. All right, what that basically does, as you can see from the the line here, um, it will find the shortest distance, so to speak, between two points. So a lot of times, um, especially with cameras, you'll go and tell it, okay, move move here and then move here and rotate this much, and then in the meantime, it'll kind of it'll kind of say. Oh hey, why don't we rotate five extra times in the meantime? Because we don't really know what he means, and that's not what you really want. So more often than not, you want to select use uh, quiet interpolation. So not always, but a good portion of the time. And then, as far as I know, there's no way to scale objects while in matinee, so I won't go over that right now either. Uh, so that should be pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, so we'll see how that goes.